Hello crafters, I'm Jan B and I'm an independent Stamping Up demonstrator. Today's video is a little bit different in as much as I haven't prepared for it. For the last three days I've been attending the virtual Stamping Up on Stage event and it finished this afternoon at about two o'clock. This is the day before I'm posting the video. Um, I've seen five, I think it is, different ways of colouring in. And as you know, I normally say that my way of colouring in is quick and dirty and these other ways look very good. So what I'm going to do, like you, every week you see a video and then you decide whether you're going to give it a go or not. I've seen something on a video and I'm going to give it a go. It's my first time of trying this, okay? Um, but if you can do it, and no reason why I can't do it, so bear with me. Before I start, I want to explain two special offers that Stamping Up have or will be having, and the two are going to collide together and they go together brilliantly. First one you may already have heard of, and that is a joining promotion. And the offer for that is normally you, it would cost you £99 or €129 Euros, and you can choose £130 or €175 Euros of product to go with your starter kit. The offer at the moment is instead of paying £99 it will cost you £75 so that's saving £24 and instead of 129 euros, it will cost you 100 euros. So that's saving 29 euros. That on its own is an amazing offer. And most people who join Stamping Up join to be what are known as hobbyists. It's what I like to call savvy shoppers. And that is they join just to get the discount on the products they buy, which is fine, it's brilliant. It is totally accepted by Stamping Up and it, we love hobbyists. Well, we love everybody who's joined Stamping Up. It's a lovely family to be part of. So that on its own is an amazing offer. But also, Stamping Up announced that there is going to be another offer which is going to run on the 16th to the 18th of November. And the 16th is this coming Tuesday. And on those three days, they are having a seasonal sale which means if you took up the joining offer during these three days what you choose for £75 could be less if you choose cardstock, ink pads and dies which means you could get even more for your joining fee it is really an absolutely amazing offer I will be sending out the leaflet to all of my uh, customers um, and followers. The offer is global, so if you're in the North American market, South Pacific market, as well as the European market, this offer is for you as well. It's the most amazing time to join Stamping Up, whether you want to be a savvy shopper or whether you want to be a business builder like myself. Everybody is welcome and the offer is just too good to be missed. If you would like more information about this, please email me at jambi at jambicards.com or if you're in North America or South Pacific, uh, please email the uh, get in touch with your demonstrator and ask what the details are for yours. So I'm now going to move on to the card that I'm going to make. These are the card pieces I'm going to use. So I'll give you the measurements and these are the standard um, A6 card sizes that I'm going to be doing with the middle layer and the top layer and for the American North um, North America with the letter size cardstock these will be your normal sizes, your A2 sizes. Okay, so you want a card base for A4 inches it's eight and a quarter inches by five and three quarter inches, scored at four and one eighths. 
I will put all three lots of measurements in the box below the video but for this I'm only mentioning the inches for A4 cardstock users. Now you will need two pieces of basic white cardstock and they should measure three and seven eighths inches by five and a half inches. A piece of mint macaroon which is going to go on the inside like that. I've kept it out because I want to do some stamping on there and that should measure three and three quarter inches by five and a half inches. Now I'm not sure which designer series paper I'm using. Both of them are from the hand penned and these should measure the same as that mint macaroon which is three and three quarters by five and a half inches. Now if I've got time I'm going to show you two methods of uh, two different methods of doing inking. So if I keep those and those handy you will also need a scrap of basic white oops dropped that on the floor and this is just a quarter sheet of basic white that's for the image and also a piece of basic white that measures three eighths of an inch by the length I haven't decided the stamp set that um, this was demonstrated by Shannon actually she works at um, Stamping Up and she used one of the new stamp sets that's going to be in the January to June mini catalogue that will go live on the 4th of January but because that's such a long way away I thought I would use the stamp set that she recommended um, if we didn't take advantage of ordering the new one. I do have the new one but you know two months in advance I think it is just too much in advance. It's too much of a tease as far as I'm concerned. So I'm using hand penned and I'm going to be using this image here. I have taken the sentiment from the new stamp set. I just like it. It's something along the lines of have a perfect birthday. It was lovely. Yeah, I just think that's lovely and it's just one straight one. I do have that straight one there, congratulations, which I could have used, but I prefer the other one because it's quite a bit longer. Okay. Right, so if I put that to one side, the first thing I'm going to do is to stamp my image. And I already have my stamparatus set up. Okay, so these are the dies that go with penned flowers and I will be using that one to die cut my image. Ahead of time I have already cut some greenery. I've done those in garden green and I also went to the sunflowers dies and I've used these. I've die cut quite a few of these. Again, both both sets are in garden green. So right where's my okay so uh, ahead of time I've lined up my um, stamparatus so I know that I want to go there because this piece of paper I can get one there and I can get one there. Now I'm going to put my stamp set under here to give it a bit of support and I'm using my memento ink let's see if I can get this down a bit oh, you can see half of it so that's good oh get my handy little tool right so it's the lower half that I need, not the half towards there. There we go. And because this is a quarter of a sheet, if I turn it around, I can get another one there. not sure how my time is going to go with this so I don't know whether I can do one or two cards. I was just so impressed with these different methods. You may well have seen them before. Um, 
I possibly have as well, but never really took it on board. There we go. Now the other stamping that I need to do is for the sentiment. So what I need to do for that is I need to move that out of the way. Ooh, I've got an empty box on the floor, that's handy. So I don't need these mats, but I do need this one. And that there is my pencil mark for this stamp. And I put a note on there to remind myself to change the mat underneath, which I frequently forget. And that's whether I'm doing a video or not, I forget. Um, I have already done some of these ahead of time, just in case. Okay, so that's three eighths. And it just goes above the dotted line. And this I'm going to do in garden green, which I did bring over with me. There we go, have a perfect birthday. All right, so I'm happy with that. I thought I'd put my hand in that. Never mind. Um, I'm not going to need that again, so I can go in that box. Maybe I ought to do that each week. Put this little box to um, pop, pop my things in. Right, so let's take one of these. I'm using one of these, which I did earlier, um, because it's had a good time to dry. Now, <clears throat> For my leaves, I am going to be using, shall I use garden green or mint macaroon? I think I will use the garden green again. Now I'm going to get myself a piece of scrap here, which might die. Now what you're going to use for this is a dauber. Now I'm surprised I didn't have one for Garden Green already, but I did recently change them all over. So normally you know that you would finish up with green all over your dauber, like that. But for this technique, you need just on the side. Okay. And then what you do for the leaves, you just go onto your leaf and start in the centre and just push away. Now this is not perfect, it is not meant to colour the leaves to perfection. Okay, so I've got the dark bit in the centre and it gets lighter as it goes out. And that is what you are aiming to do. Okay, darker in the middle again. And then the bigger leaves must be a lot easier. As I say, I have never tried this before. Which I'm, I mean, I really hope it gives you the, um, makes you brave enough to give it a go, because it is something different. Okay, so now I've done that one and I've forgotten to bring over another one for a colour. Let me just go and see what I have. These are my colours, and if I turn them over, I've got the colours written on the bottom. Um, I could do Poppy Parade or Highland Heather. 
and I've got a gorgeous grape there, rich basil berry. What should we do? Poppy parade. So that that one there. With that container, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this. I put the names. I don't know if you can. Can you see the name in there? I just punt a circle, then I write the name on it, and then I just drop it in there. Okay, so that's Poppy Parade. We don't need this one now. Nice red, it'll give it quite a pop. I don't want it too dark, do we? Right, let's see. I would suggest that ink pad is very, very wet. Now, I don't want it to go that dark all over, so I'm going to rub this away. Let's see what that does. Oh, that's better. So yes, I've got nice and dark in the middle. Okay, and then this one. The little ones are really a little bit fiddly to do, I have to say. But now I've got some very, very small ones. There we go. That looks quite effective, doesn't it? I'm going to take it up close. You can see it is nowhere near perfect, but when you look at it from a distance, it does look good. Do you agree with that? I hope so. I'm pleased with that. Oops. That's better. Right. Now I'm going to use my Big Shot to cut this out. Let's move that one out of the way. Actually, I've just had a thought. I think maybe I should have stamped one of the images using a colour rather than um, rather than memento black. Right, concentrate on what you're doing for the moment. You can always go back to that. Oh, it looks as if one of my plates is actually broken, split. Why did I see that? Oh, maybe not. No, it's not gone all the way through, so that's okay. Okay, so that's my flowers. So I need my adhesives. I have seen the new January to June mini catalogue. I will be calling it the Spring Mini Catalogue and I have to say there are some fabulous things in there, really absolutely fabulous. But for me, I think it's a little bit early for the catalogues to be bought out. Right, so I'm going to pop this up, I've got to decide which one I want it on first, if I want it on that one. 
or do I want it on that one? Oh no, that looks too plain, doesn't it? Okay, this one wins. Right, so I'm going to do it with dimensionals. Now what Shannon did was she cut her, no she didn't cut hers, her image was much bigger and she put it across there. I wonder if maybe I should cut mine in half and just split it a little bit. Would be an idea, wouldn't it? Shall I do that? Let's give that a try. That wasn't in my plan. The thing is, because it's going to have the sentiment going over it, oh, for goodness sake, I'm going to try and cut it in half with this. It's been a long three days, two and a half days. Two days I had to be ready by eight o'clock in the morning. It's, um, I'm not really a morning person. So I'm going to do that like that, right? There we go. So this will just make my uh, image a bit bigger. So, right, here you go. Let me stick that on here first. Right, I have a nice new Tombow. In fact, I better move that out of the way, didn't I? Because that red might come off. Let's get my silicone mat. This will stop anything sticking. One of the presentations at, on stage was um, a card making presentation between Shelley Gardner, who's the co-founder of Stamping Up, and her daughter Sarah, who's the CEO of the company. And I have seen those two craft together so many times, and every time it's absolutely hilarious. The two of them have such a brilliant rapport between them. You can't, you know, you're watching it and you really can't help laughing yourself. And when you're in your room by yourself, because it's a virtual event, you do feel a little bit silly. But hey ho. Right, just one in the middle. And another thing that I saw, and I think this was Shelley who did it. She had a long image that she was putting onto a card front and she just put two large dimensionals on the top and on the bottom. And then she put some seal, which is our replacement for snail, she put that across the center. And when she put, popped it onto her card, she made sure the two at the top adhered, the two at the bottom adhered, they're both the dimensionals and then she pushed the centre bit down so that the um, seal made it stick down and it was good because it gave it dimension that way. Again, something else I would never have thought about but it's these little things that you see when you know we go to these events that um, I learn so much. Right, I need this about halfway. That looks about halfway. So I'll take that and just put that a bit down. And then put this one above it. Obviously, if you joined Stamping Up, you would be able to come to their events. As you can tell, I've come away from it feeling that I've learned loads. The more I look at this, the more I like it. It could almost be poppies, couldn't it? Which are one of my favourite flowers, especially red poppies. And I have said this before and I'm still waiting to see purple poppies because I believe they do exist. 
So to me the idea of that, oh absolutely gorgeous. Right so now I'm going to pop this across here. I'm going to cut the ends. This is something I have done before but this was something that I learned quite quite recently um, and for me someone who can't do straight lines it was absolutely amazing okay so it's just cut that bring that bit back pop it uh, which way you've got to go you want to make sure these lines go the same direction it's easier if you've got a bigger piece at the end there okay so hold that in place and then cut that off okay so I've got slanted lines both sides and they're even now what I'm going to do with these before ahead of time I die cut these and this was one of the dies in with the hand penned. It was this one here. Um, again, what Shan Shannon did, she put um, some ribbon under hers. There we go. I could have left more, actually, couldn't I? So shall I go right to the edge? No, I think I'll trim this off. So what I'll do is if I hold that like that, in fact, let me adhere that on there. It's going to be a lot easier than me trying to hold on to it. And then I can cut the sides parallel to these slanted cuts. Hopefully a bit longer. I did cut some of these in mint macaroon as well, in case. I thought that that looked better but I've since I've used the garden green on the leaves I'm really taken with this okay so I'm just going to cut like that no don't like that okay I'm cutting right by the edge of it that's better so I would have to do the same on this side Yes, that's good. I didn't like that funny little bit sticking out. So now I am going to adhere that on there. Shall I? Do you want it even more? No, I'm going to glue it down. So I am going to put glue just along the red parts. Okay, so that will hold that nicely. I don't think it needs dimensionals in the split there. Maybe just at the sides there. Let's see if we can just squeeze two small ones in. Let's take the cover off first. Alright, you want to play hard to get. That's it. Yeah. So gently lift that one up, put it on the corner. That's better. There we go, got that one. So I'll put it under the top here. Now I remember Shannon had some, I think they were die cut these and they were from one of the stamp sets but I'm using these ones. Shall I have one on there? Yes I think so. Right now Tombow is probably the best to anchor this down. If you prefer using blue dots by all means go for it. Actually, it does make a nice change sitting here making a birthday card. And turn inwards a bit. 
and you there we go so there's that card except I've got to do the little one in the middle and what I'm planning to do for that is I'm going to stamp this image again um, oh yes I'll put my stamp rotors down here to keep it safe so that's not the one I want in fact you know this box is a size that I could actually have it sitting across my bin which is to the side and I can actually see what's in there put that there that there that on there I hope I've left myself enough room for this. I need a stamp setter for underneath there. I can't get that out without a fight, so let's use this. This is my chamois. I still haven't found the other one that I lost. That's absolutely amazing. Now, what part do I want? What's the top? That bit there. So I want it in there. So that's not going to work. Would it work if I turn it round? Let's have a look. Oh. So I want the top bit. Nope. So what I will do is pull this off. There we go, I'm going to go right off like that. I'm not planning on colouring it at all. Oops. Good job we got two sides to our paper. I'll take some black. And it is just this top end that I want. One more. That's not coming up very dark, is it? That's better. And that will go on the inside of my card. Now, of course, if I want to stamp another one in a colour, that's not positioned very well, is it? There we go. Okay, so that's my card. I don't think I'll put any more embellishments on like diamonds because I've got my two. Oh, you've got walkabouts. Oh, well, never mind. Um, no, no embellishments at all. Um, but there's an idea for a new, a different idea rather, for how to do colouring. Um, next time I'll check my ink pads and make sure they're not quite as wet as that, but it looks good. You think so? I hope you like that one. Now what I'm going to do for the second one, I'm not going to make a complete card out of it. I'm just going to colour this to show you. And this time I'm going to be using... Um, what pens did she use? I think it... Oh I know, yes yes, bear with me. It was using a Wink of Stella pen with colours. I've got the, oh, here we go. There's my two. 
what I will do is after I close the video, I, when I post it, I will pro finish this off and post photographs on my blog so you can see. Um, but the process is going to be exactly the same as that one. Right, so what you can do is if you, oh my goodness, it's got a curly, that's not good. I'm cut that off. If I leave that on there, I might get ink in places where I don't want ink to go. Right, okay, again, I haven't tried this before. No, she used her pen and just went on to, that's it, and then coloured with her wink, wink of star. And the amount of shine this had on, on it was absolutely amazing. If you're not happy about actually putting your pen straight onto ink, you could put some ink into your into the lid. But it's only going to be such a small area. And if I get a little bit of uh, green ink wandering in the wrong place, I don't mind because that's going to be shiny. Okay. I want a bit of shad shadow at the back bottom here, so just put a little bit more glue, um, glue, a little bit more garden green. Just concentrate on the dark bits first. I'm sure lots of you are going to say you prefer this more precise method of colouring, which is fine. Next year we are hoping to be able to have stamping up events in person which will be absolutely fabulous really looking forward to that right okay so that's all of that now to clean my wink of stella pen that's all i need to do just keep going until it goes dry and uh, not dry clear okay so it's gone very clear down here so let's put this one away now the next one should be pretty good because I said that that's quite inky so let's see is that yes that's in shot so start round the inside first See, I'm starting off in the centre because that's where I want the darkest of the poppy parade. She says, and she starts straight round the outside. Try doing as I say, not as I do. And I have got something I want to show you as well. Okay, moral of the story here is, <laughs> if you do like I'm doing, go for the dark area on the outside of your flower. Right. My flower's going to be really mixed up. That's all right, I'm not going to um, get upset about it because it's, uh, 
it's going to finish up so sparkly. This technique wasn't one of Shannon's techniques, I don't think. I can't remember the lady's name who showed this one. But the other techniques I've seen, I will try and incorporate them in future videos. No doubt the red ink on my pen here will stain. I think red is probably the worst colour out of all the colours for staining. But it will be just a stain, it's not like it'll be something that's going to be coming off onto other projects. In fact, I'm thinking that maybe this may be my favourite. I'm also thinking that where I've prepared the other one with the Designer Series paper on, the one with the stripes, I think I might, because I'm going to be finishing it off once the video is finished, I think I might change that over to use the same Designer Series paper that I've used for the first one because when I put that first one on the stripes I thought it looked rather bland do you agree? whereas with the flowery one it just seemed to make it pop Next time I do this, I'm going to try doing it so that it's, um, I use it, the ink from the lid, and then maybe I'll add a bit of water to it. But I'm really happy about this. And let's see how much we can get off of this. Fortunately, my brush is nearly finished anyway. Let's see if I can get any more out of it. No, it sounds like air coming down. Okay, well, I'm not going to make you watch how long I have to do that to clear it off. Put that bit on there. Again, something I can do off screen. Um, but there we go. I'll bring it up to the screen so that you can see it. And I'll also give... Oops. I've said this before. If ever I get messy with ink, it's always the red colours. Now let's see if I can tilt to get you to see the shine. Let's go in front of the light more. I really don't know whether you can see that. But it really is very, very sparkly. OK, I'll see if I can get the um, sparkle to show up in the uh, photographs. So, something else I wanted to show you. The other day on my blog I was showing you how to decorate our boxes. Now we do these craft gift boxes okay they come like that and you fold them up like this and they open like a pizza box so it opens from here 
upwards. But two things, uh, no one thing really. When you're working on this, please remember that there is a film over this side. I don't know if I could get, start pulling it up to show you, but it's there to keep it nice and clean until you are ready to, oh there we go, I'm not going to put it right up but can you see there's a film there, okay, it's a good bit of thinking by stamping up so that as they're pushed up against each other on there they won't get scratched. These are the three boxes that I've made, this one I've just finished off with some shredded paper and I'm very quickly going to show you how I make that shredded paper. I know you can buy it, but it's much, much cheaper to make your own. There was this one that I've made into a shaker card. Okay. They're brilliant gift boxes though. And I made one for my grandson for his birthday. That's um, Big Cats in the Wild. That was from the In Wild. No, Big Cat's stamp set, and that was a retired thing that I had. And I cut them... Uh, oh, there was two things, yes. I'd just tie a ribbon round them to keep them closed. But I always cut the corner off like that. Otherwise, I find they really s stick out. But if you put that, cut that bit off, it doesn't stick out very much at all. It does a little bit, yep. Yeah not much. If you get those boxes, that's two tips for you, okay? And to make your own um, tissue paper, I'm not going to separate this, I'm only going to do a little bit to show you. What I do is with my guillotine, you could do it with your um, trimmer, but it would take a lot longer, and you just do this and you push it through very very gradually so that it's like I don't know maybe a sixteenth of an inch I think here in the UK you could buy this tissue paper something like five complete sheets for about 99p so a pound um, equally if you buy a packet of shredded tissues I think the amount in that bag is probably only one sheet, which just goes to show you how much, how very expensive it is, because they charge 99p for that as well. Okay, so you just keep going like that. As I say, I'm only doing a little bit to show you. So first of all, pull it apart. And then once you've pulled it apart, pick it up and scrunch it all up. Okay, and then just put it apart again and you will see it is all beautifully crinkly to go into your gift boxes, whether you buy those sort of gift boxes or any of your own. Uh, isn't that clever? I got that tip years ago from Angie Judah, who goes by the name of Chicken Scratch. And that is about it for today, I think. Um, considering I didn't plan it, um, a video, and I've done that really on the hoof, um, it's turned out pretty good. Um, as I say, I finished this one off in time for the video. Um, no, in time for the my blog. Okay, so if you go onto my blog, which is www.jambicards.com, then you'll see how I finished this off to match this. I might change my mind and put it on the stripy one. I don't know, just so that you can see the difference. But watch this space. <laughs> okay, many thanks for joining me today. Oh, and also don't forget the special offer by stamping up the joining offer and the sale that starts on Tuesday. So it's on for three days, Tuesday, Wednesday and Thursday. Okay, uh, yeah, 16th to the 18th, so that's three days. Um, and if you want to join, 
wait until the 16th and join during that time because you'll get more free money if your products that you choose includes inks, cardstock and dyes. The only inks not included are um, third party inks like Memento and Stays On nor the bundles of our colour families. Okay, so any questions please email me, I'm always happy to help you. In the box below the video I will put the measurements of the cards in inches and metric for A4 and inches for letter size cardstock and all the products I've used I will put a link to my 247 online stamping up shop and if you do shop with me because you don't have your own stamping up demonstrator I can only sell to Europe I'm afraid and the countries in Europe are the UK, Netherlands, France, Austria and Germany. They're stamping up rules I'm afraid um, but don't forget to add that hostess code so that when I send you happy mail at the beginning of December I can send you some free product as well. If you've enjoyed my video and would like to be notified each time I upload a new one please click on the um, <laughs> subscribe button in the bottom right hand corner and then click on the bell so that you do actually get the notifications. So many thanks for joining me today. I look forward to being with you next time. In the meantime, please take care, stay safe and happy crafting. Cheerio!